your unique story our global audience global one media Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global One Media's exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with company executives sharing insights into their unique journey. I'm your host, Ashley Berry. Today, Steve Cochran, president and CEO of Lithium Chile, is here with us, a company with one of the top lithium exploration portfolio in the world's top lithium jurisdiction with active exploration programs underway. Lithium Chile is listed on the TSX Venture Exchange as LITH, and the OTCQB as LTMCF. Steve, welcome. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you for your very kind introduction. Well, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, and I want to congratulate you on the recent major update you've announced that the lithium resource at the Solar de Azario project has increased by 28%, and this is from your diamond drill hole. Maybe you can tell us about the resource estimate before and after discovery and this amazing number. Well, you're absolutely correct. And uh, I'm so proud of our team. Uh, this hole is a monster hole for a number of reasons. Uh, that 28% are, are roughly 700,000 metric tons of additional resource came from one hole. And that hole had uh, an average grade of about 516 milligrams per liter of lithium. All our other holes have averaged about 300. So mm. this uh, diamond drill hole number five which was on the easternmost sort of uh, part of the property, uh, is a game changer. And really, it's had our geologists rethinking the whole sort of uh, geological map, the geological strategy, because uh, uh, it really was a significant uh, resource addition for us. And the important thing about this whole, not only in terms of its grade and uh, the contribution it's made to our overall resource, it's now taken us sort of from kind of an upstart uh, lithium uh, resource play to the big leagues, right? Yeah. If you look at all of the uh, acquisitions that have been done in Argentina, uh, in our basic area, uh, the real interest sort of kicks in at that three and a half million to four million metric tons. You know, uh, Millennial was bought out of four million. Lithica was bought out of 3.55 million. Uh, Neolithium, of course, was a little bigger at uh, 5, 5.2 million uh, metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. This one hole has taken our resource from 2.5 to 3.3 million metric tons. So we're now in the big leagues. And I think that's not only exciting for us, but I think that's a huge potential for our investors. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful news. Also, you mentioned in your news release that this is the highest grade of lithium discovered to date on the Arizaro property. Perhaps you can tell us a bit more about this and compare it to previous grade discoveries. I know you gave us a little sense of that, um, but if you can maybe tell us what it is about this lithium discovered, what the significance is. Well, first and foremost, as I mentioned, it makes us rethink uh, our modeling. We've we've been you know working with 300 uh, milligrams per liter as an average, and all of a sudden uh, over you know 200 meters you have an average of 516. Uh, it certainly created a a good problem uh, for our geologists trying to understand a little bit more of the dynamics of the formation, a little more of the dynamics of the basin. But if you look at 516, and of course uh, grades as high as 584 when we tested the hole. That's at the upper range of what you see in Argentina. So from a, a grade standpoint, uh, we are now at, uh, at least on uh, diamond drill hole number five, at a level that puts us sort of at the best of the best, if you like, uh, in respect to high-grade Argentinian uh, lithium. So uh, we're very pleased, obviously, with the, the, the significant improvement in grade and also excited about what does it mean for the overall project, right? Right, so, and we have other holes to talk about, of course, um, you're talking about number five, but then you have four, six, and production hole three. Perhaps you can give us any updates on anything as far as those holes uh, considered. Well, the first takeaway, Ashley, of course, is that uh, we expect those holes to add, certainly, uh, production hole three and diamond drill hole six 
to add, uh, again, uh, significantly to our overall resource. So, uh, you know, knock on wood, we have uh, those two holes uh, come in as good as we hope. Uh, it's, it's very conceivable that that uh, 700,000 uh, metric tons becomes a million or 1.2 million metric tons uh, with the addition of those two other holes. So now we're closing in on that 4 million uh, metric tons for the project, which is a game changer for us. Uh, the production hole number three has completed testing. We did a three week pump test uh, to try and uh, understand and determine flow rates, which of course contribute to your overall resource. Uh, all that data has been collected, it's been correlated, and it's now in the hands of Montgomery and Associates, which is our independent engineering firm that will come up with the additional resource from production hole three. So that's imminent. We, we expect uh, that resource update soon. Uh, Diamond drill hole four was uh, good news, bad news. Uh, as uh, I've been told, it was a geologist's delight and a driller's nightmare. We actually had a very quicksand-like thick, uh, porous, uh, liquid uh, sand uh, deposit uh, below 210 meters. Great for resource, great for uh, an aquifer and, and a large brine deposit, terrible for drilling. It, it just mm. holds that drill bit and, and with the equipment we had, it was impossible to get below 270 meters. So while we saw great uh, grade, because we weren't able to get to the basement, uh, which is around 450, 500 meters, we really didn't see or we didn't get the resource number from that hole that uh, we we're hoping because it was just too short. Uh, hole number six, on the other hand, which is between our second production hole and uh, diamond drill hole four, we used uh, heavier equipment, heavier mud, and we got to 457 meters. So there's 200 plus meters of pay in that hole. And right now that hole is being cleaned up and tested and the samples will be collected over the next week to 10 days and will again be sent uh, to Montgomery and added into the overall resource. So we're excited because we have two holes. We had a great hole we just announced. We have two other holes pending and we see that that resource uh, is going to increase uh, I would say uh, hopefully by another 20, 25%. So uh, um, next uh, next two to three weeks should be very interesting. Mm. So I'm curious, you talk about the good news, bad news, a driller's nightmare. Uh, with hole three, uh, is there anything you can do? I mean, I know that your company is always finding solutions. And so is there anything you can do with a situation like that or you just have to move on? Well, hole three is a good hole. That's our production. That's hole. the good one. Okay. Yeah. And that was drilled with a much heavier duty uh, production rig. The diamond, rig, uh, diamond drill rigs are very uh, light. They're only a two inch diameter uh, hole and they're underpowered basically from a motor and uh, a drilling mud, drilling uh, solution uh, standpoint. The large rotary rigs not, not only are capable of a 15 inch diameter hole, but the mud pumps associated with them are very powerful. So that allows the drillers to force uh, mm -hmm. uh, high pressure mud into the hole to actually pack that sand. It's, it's like drilling in a sandbox, you know, you're playing a sandbox, your sand keeps caving in. Uh, and that's what happened on, on drill hole four. The, the sand just caved in and just really prevented that, uh, that to drill from turning. With a much heavier duty rig, which we plan to move on to a hole four, we will solve that problem. And like you say, uh, we will get to the basement. Um, we're excited because it's such a porous, uh, such a, uh, a, a very liquid uh, uh, section of the property. Formation is ideal for a brine deposit. We're just excited about being able to get to the basement and see what the real potential is on that hole. Yeah, really excited to hear about that. And also uh, fantastic news about the fact that you've already found a solution. And I'm sure you'll have updates on that soon. But besides all these very important updates, you've also announced that you have moved your temporary camp from the Solar site to a permanent location. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about these changes as well as any other changes and plans that Lithium Chile has for its operations in Argentina. Well, as you know, we are... Uh, getting a lot of attention 
from around the world because of the developing resource and and the fact as you know everybody's looking to to acquire and, and lock up uh, large lithium deposits one of the things we've been told by some of the biggest companies in the space is they like to see a project that's ready for production you know there's the expiration side and the early stage but for really the serious players the big players they like to see that your project is turnkey ready so one of the things we've done is we we we're in the midst of our pre-economic assessment we've identified a process and a company to provide uh, a production process uh, for this play uh, and one of the things of course uh, as part of that uh, our camp on the solar was temporary it was a temporary exploration camp uh, under the rules uh, in Salta province and, uh, and really I believe all three uh, provinces where lithium production is in Argentina, um, you have to, production facilities, permanent camps have to be off the solar itself. So we've built our permanent camp on the flank of the solar on claims that we already own. Uh, this camp will be permanent. Mm. It will not only house the exploration team, but it'll be large enough and capable of housing our production team. Our plant will be built adjacent to the permanent camp. We have enough land, enough space for two 25,000 metric ton a year production facilities. Our plans call for our initial plant to be 25,000, and that's what the PA is uh, being based on. And we have the space to build that. We have a permanent camp now to support that. So for an outside party who's looking at this project, we, we, we have really morphed or grown from just a pure exploration play into now more of a permanent uh, production story. And along with that, another important fact that was in that press release is we've completed our baseline environmental impact study. That will be filed next month with the uh, provincial government of Salta, and that will form the basis of our production permit. So we have a permanent camp, we have a production uh, facility space uh, ready to go and uh, knock on wood again with the baseline application going in next month. We could see our full-blown permit um, early in 2024. Wow, lots of, lots of developments. And I can only imagine having a permanent camp really allows everyone to fully focus and just get the job done. It must be so exciting for you. Um, moving and on. It's a lot, yeah. And it's a lot more comfortable, trust me. Well, of yeah. course. <laughs> and yeah. so now, you know, moving on to Chile, um, your project there, any updates surrounding that that you might be able to tell us briefly about? That, that's a great story and, and probably uh, a podcast on its own. But as you know, uh, rules are changing in Chile. And contrary to a lot of the negative press, Chile recognizes that they're losing out on this massive development in the lithium space that's taking place worldwide. 38 projects uh, under underway in Argentina, nothing in Chile. So this whole private-public partnership is designed to encourage investment, not discourage, but encourage it. So we're seeing a huge amount of interest being reflected to us on, on our projects, all 12 projects at Chile. Uh, what we're very uh, excited about is the Solar de Umera. Uh, it's drill ready. Mm. We have uh, community approval. Uh, we have permits in place. Uh, we have a contractor now that um, we're just waiting on. Uh, he's been drilling uh, 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 two wells for a competitor about 30 kilometers south on the same basin uh, with I understand good success. Uh, he will be moving. Uh, the plan is to have him move in the next week or so. So we're looking at, uh, you know, 10 days from now, we could have our first uh, drill program in Chile underway in three years. So that's a game changer as well. We'd love to see similar results, uh, uh, similar uh, opportunities as we've seen in Argentina. It's having two plays in two different uh, uh, locations, uh, you know, uh, geographical country locations would be a real, uh, I think, uh, a real coup for us. So uh, we're close. Okay. Well, you know, given all these positive developments and updates, if you haven't already convinced the viewer, those potential investors or, or current investors, uh, any last words for folks that are watching? 
No, I, I, I you know, I, I'm probably a broken record. Um, obviously, uh, I'm the company's biggest fan, but I, uh, I still see tremendous upside. Uh, I think we have very little downside. If you look at it just from a, a resource standpoint, uh, you know, we're in, in, there's really only two or three companies now left in Argentina that haven't been acquired that are in that, you know, three to four million a metric ton range. We're one of them. Uh, so, you know, we're in a good place right now, uh, building this resource, adding uh, uh, the Chilean component. I just see that uh, there's tremendous upside, obviously, in our shares. And, and given what we already have, realistically, th there should be little downside. We are undervalued as we speak. That would be the only message I would like to convey is that great opportunity to, to generate returns with, I think, very little risk. For sure. And I would say that's not such a bad place to be, is it now? So yeah. thank you so much for these impressive insights, for this fruitful discussion. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Steve Cochran, President and CEO of Lithium Chile. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, Ashley.